Fred, good morning to you. From what I understand, President Putin requested this call with, with <laughs> President Biden. Is that your understanding? And what do you think he wants? Yeah, that is my understanding. This follows up a, a call they had earlier in December. And I think he wants to ratchet up the pressure. He thinks by having more talks with Biden, he's putting more pressure on Biden. Uh, by January, uh, they'll have more than 100,000 troops on the borders of Ukraine. Um, U.S. spokesman for the White House yesterday at a briefing for this call talked about it as uh, a, a crisis that's been bad for a while and, and has the potential for getting worse. And so Putin's reason to do this is say, saying, look, I mean business. I need an assurance that NATO will not uh, put any troops on Ukraine's territory. Uh, I need an assurance that Georgia and Ukraine will never be members of NATO. These are two things they can never do. And from the Biden side, they want to de-escalate the crisis. They want to push back from the edge of what could be the worst uh, crisis in uh, Europe since the end of the Cold War. That's a great setup for this discussion on where things stand right now. Fred, you're a foreign policy expert. You analyze the behavior of state leaders across the world. Um, what's your read on this? Is it inevitable that Russia regains control of Ukraine, or will they bow down to pressure from the U.S. and Europe European allies? Well, let's draw back first and take a look at 2022 as a whole from the Biden administration standpoint. It's not just Russian troops on the edge of Ukraine uh, that the U.S. is facing. They're also facing a ratcheting up of pressures of China on Taiwan. They're facing uh, an Iran uh, that's uh, crossing toward the threshold of a nuclear weapon, 60 percent uh, uh, enrichment of uranium. 4% is all that's allowed under its treaty. 90% is a bomb. Israel's not going to sit back and just watch that happen. So you could have uh, the most stressful geopolitical year really in the last 30 years facing uh, the Biden administration. The Biden administration has to decide how is it going to navigate all of this. Part of the reason it's happening is that I think President Xi and, uh, and President Putin are testing the Biden administration. They've seen what they uh, what they see as weakness in the Afghanistan withdrawal. Mm -hmm. They've seen what they interpret as indecision. They're pretty sure that the U.S. isn't willing to go undertake military action to defend either Taiwan or Ukraine. And so I think you really could see a year of test in this uh, in 2022 of the Biden administration. That's so interesting because you also have President Biden's polling uh, continuing to decline. And, you know, some would argue following Afghanistan, this administration could really use a foreign policy win. How aggressive do you expect Biden to be when it comes to Russia next year? I think he'll be aggressive in terms of sanctions should Russia cross a line and invade uh, Ukraine further, not I mean, Ukraine, invade Ukraine. They've already done that in Luhansk and Donetsk and, of course, Crimea. But if they go further, <coughs> uh, 2014, when Crimea was taken, the uh, uh, Obama administration left a lot of sanctions on the shelf. It didn't go nearly as far as it could have. And, uh, and you've seen a lot of interagency action over the holidays preparing uh, a, a much tougher set of approaches. On the other hand, uh, the uh, Russians can be quite sure that the U.S. itself won't take military action. What it would do and what it said it would do is it would give more uh, the Ukraine more means to defend itself. And should it take any action in Ukraine, it has also said to, to Putin and to the Russians that one would uh, ratchet up uh, the support for uh, uh, NATO allies that are on the board of Ukraine. So Poland, the Baltic states, other things that would really change the whole post-Cold Cold War nature of Europe to a place that's really trying to go into a new modern world to one that's really breaking down into old spheres of geopolitical influence well, of the sort that we had during the Soviet period. I think we all had to study up on Asia uh, at the height of the U.S.-China issues. And now it seems like we're going to have to dig deep on, on Russia and all things Europe. Thank you for joining us, Fred. It's always great to get your expertise. Fred Thank, Camp. thank you, Stephen. Just one other thing. This is happening at a time of internal domestic weakness. So it's, uh, it's external stress at a time of domestic internal polarization and weakness of the United States. We haven't faced anything like that, it really, in my memory, where those two have come together as strongly as they do this year.